Deterra delivers high-performance data orchestration and advanced automation to large enterprises and cloud service providers, reducing storage management and infrastructure costs by as much as 70%. I'm Hal Woods. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Deterra, and today I'm going to give a company and product overview, including our value proposition, our target markets, and our key product tenants. So, Deterra offers enterprise software-defined storage. We'll go over what this means in the markets we serve and a bit of a company background. So Deterra was established in 2013 and we shipped our first product in 2016. Our value proposition is we increase agility for our customers and we save on CapEx and OpEx. When the founders met in 2013, they recognized a significant transformation going on in the IT industry. There were three key attributes of this transformation that we targeted. First is scalability the need to go from very small to very large very quickly. Programmability, this is the notion that rather than interfacing through the system through graphical user interfaces, we interface through APIs. And adaptability, this is recognizing that this transformation is driven by rapid change in the environment, whether it be new technology, new business opportunities, competitive threats, or rapid growth. Uh, this is enterprise storage, so at the same time we're addressing this, this transformation, we must address the classical requirements of availability and predictable performance. The other thing that's transforming at the same time is the application world. It used to be that applications were run in their own infrastructure, but now we have application instances run in a shared infrastructure that is inherently multi-tenant and multi-application. There is both legacy applications as well as cloud native. When I'm running applications, each application instance needs CPU, it needs memory, and it needs I.O. And these can be deployed in virtual machines. They can be deployed in containers. Or they can be deployed bare metal. The use cases that for these, where these uh, attributes are particularly important include digital first enterprises, this is businesses whose uh, primary business model is the monetization, collection, and an analysis of information. It's cloud service providers. And this could be software as a service or platform as a service. It's storage as a service within enterprises. And finally, it's the classical application of database, either as an application or more often in the modern data center as a service. So collectively, this def environment defines our target market. The next thing that's transforming at the same time is the way storage is accessed by applications. So data flows in and out of the applications into the storage. But what's changed, and we mentioned this earlier, is it's primarily through programmable interfaces, as well as driven by policy. And this is one of the areas we believe we distinguish ourselves in working with an entire application and all of its storage needs, where you specify the intent, and the storage system takes care of delivering to that intent. Now let's talk about the five tenets of the system. First is data orchestration or data center awareness.
Next is data orchestration. After that is enterprise performance. Fourth is rapid technology adoption. And finally, we have predictive operations. When we talk about data center awareness, we really talk about three attributes. First is the notion that we already mentioned this of multi-tenancy. Next is network integration. One of the things we discovered early on with our customers, especially those customers deploying cloud-like environments, is they have a network architecture. And unlike old SANs, we can no longer specify or dictate the network architecture. We must be a good citizen within the company's network architecture that exists. And finally, we have fault domains. This is the notion that the data center is architected for resiliency and error recovery. So data center awareness, multi-tenant, network integration, and then fault domains. For data orchestration, there's really two key, key attributes of this. Uh, first is continuous availability. We talked about availability as an enterprise storage attribute. This is an extension on that where we also have to handle technology transitions, policy changes, and rapid growth. In the next, in a key property and part of our key intellectual property is live data migration. In these systems, policies change, other business attributes change, things change all the time, and we must be able to migrate data within the system non-disruptively while meeting the service level objectives specified in the policy. Next, I want to talk a little bit about enterprise performance. There's two key attributes. We worked very hard to, to deliver what I'll call efficient performance in contrast to historical storage systems, which use hyper-optimization creating brittle systems. Uh, when we deliver efficient performance, what we're doing is fundamentally reducing the amount of work required in the system to correctly deliver I.O. So things like our lockless coherency protocol, which reduces the amount of work that is required across the nodes, as well as uh, log structured writes, which reduce the amount of uh, transactions going to the media, increasing media longevity, especially for Flash. The next is rich data services. You might ask why we put rich data services under enterprise performance. It's really a, a function of being able to deliver things like dedupe, snapshot, and encryption while delivering efficient performance. Most storage systems are designed and have a compromise where they can deliver rich data services, but they can't deliver those rich data services in conjunction with the performance necessary and specified by the policies. Now I'd like to talk about rapid technology adoption. Our system is designed to be multimedia, so whether it be NVMe, SATA flash, or hard drives, uh, it's meant to be multi-generational. I can use different generation servers, for example, an HPE DL380 Gen 9, an HPL DL380 Gen 10, uh, or in the future I can, I can adopt new generations. And if necessary, it can even be multi-vendor. This gives our customers the flexibility to choose the vendor of their choice. Next under rapid technology adoption is what we call asymmetric scale out. The reason this is important is we don't require the system to be constructed of the same set of resources. Most scale-out systems demand that the, the nodes in the cluster be balanced and, and be equal. And what we've done is created uh, some intellectual property that lets us take an inventory of the resources, uh, and we encourage a diverse set of resources, and then map those onto the policies specified in the service level objectives per application instance. And so I'll go through in an example here in a few minutes that really talks about the benefit of this asymmetric scale out. Finally, we have predictive operations. Predictive operations is continuous optimization. The system is always collecting telemetry information and it is 
analyzing that information to see if we can run the system more efficiently or better meet the SLAs. And then there's AI-driven automation. This is a cloud-based application that is constantly looking at uh, the environment similar to, to the continuous optimization, but it can look across a broader scope. It can look across multiple tenants. It can look across multiple systems. And then it can recommend tasks or automate those tasks to improve the efficiency of the system. The next thing to understand is all of these operations, all of these key tenants form a continuous loop where the system is constantly improving itself over time. So what I'd like to do now is give a quick example of how we use these tenants in our target's markets to deliver our value proposition. So let's use the example of a database. So let's say I've got a database that is 10, 10 terabytes in size. And as part of that database, I have uh, logs, which are one terabyte in size. And I have indexes, which are also a terabyte in size. We treat all of this storage associated with this application holistically so that when we specify the policies, the policies apply to this whole application instance. To support this environment, we've got three hybrid nodes and two SSD nodes. Through an application template, we populate the co connectivity information to connect the application instance to its storage, and all of the other attributes of the storage are specified in the application template and, and then work their, uh, the way into policies. So we send via the progr program programmatic interfaces, we send this application template to the storage system with all of these policies contained. And in one API call, all of the storage and all of its policies are instantiated. So over here, I've got my database, my logs, and my indexes. And the system is up and running, providing that service to, to the, this application. Over time, the system is generating 8K IOPS to the database with a response time of 2 milliseconds. It's generating 12,000 IOPS to the logs with 400 microsecond response time. And it's generating 30,000 IOPS to the indexes with 400 microsecond response time. Now, via our AI-driven automation, we know that this type of application uh, has a very uh, critical dependency on the performance of the overall application on the indexes. And we note that in the policy, we want the indexes to run on the best performance uh, media available. And so the system is continuously optimizing and delivering this performance. Uh, but then something interesting happens. HPE comes out with their Gen 11 server, and it, it offers a new media type in that new generation. So we add a node to this system, which is an Optane node. The continuous optimization process recognizes that the media in this node can deliver very good performance, in fact, better performance than the other nodes in the system. So we create a live mi data migration onto this new technology. And over here, we move a copy of the indexes onto this Optane node. As a result of that, the response time over here goes from 400 microseconds to 80 microseconds. And because the indexes were the critical performance factor in the application, this whole application instance enjoys 100% response time improvement. So I want to reflect on what we just did. So the system, while operating live, was delivering certain performance attributes with a certain infrastructure according to the policy set by the customer. I was delivering rich data services. So in this case, we were doing, we had a, a one hour snapshot schedule. And we were doing dedupe and encryption. Delivering this performance in this capacity. A new technology became available. So I added a new type of media on a new generation of server. Through the policies, I had already specified that these indexes want to be on the best available performance. So my AI-driven automation created a live mi data migration event. 
I moved a copy of the indexes onto this new Optane technology and improved my performance by 100%. So now I want to reflect back on our value propositions. In terms of agility, think about how quickly I was able to adapt this new technology to take advantage and improve my, uh, my application performance with new media and new generation. I used my asymmetric scale out. I only had to add one node of this technology to get this benefit. In other scale-out architectures, I typically would have had to add three or four or five nodes. So I saved significant capex by being able to use a single node of this technology. In terms of opex improvement, because the policies were set to move these indexes and, and exploit any new technology that would benefit this, all of this happened with no disruption, no downtime, and, and fully automatically within the system to improve the performance by 100%. So I hope by using this, this example, I've demonstrated how we deliver this value proposition uh, by using our data center awareness, data orchestration, enterprise performance, rapid technology adoption, and predictive operations to deliver the value to our target market. So I'm Hal Woods. If you would like to know more about Deterra, please go to deterra.io. Uh, we'd be happy to have a consultation with you. Thank you very much. Learn more about how Deterra brings the software-defined revolution to enterprise storage at deterra.io and contact Deterra for a free consultation.